Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're talking about one of the strategies that are working in today's changing market conditions. Many markets are experiencing historically low inventories. We've gone through a period of reduced market activity, and this has resulted in shorter days on market, multiple offers, and higher prices. These are traditionally the perfect market conditions for buy, fix, and sell projects. That is, assuming you can make the numbers work. You need to buy at a low enough price, maintain the improvements within the budget, and, most importantly, make sure the improvements will be accepted by the home buying community. The worst situation is one where you perform a substandard improvement. It's not good enough to meet the market demand, and it's too new for the buyer to rip out and throw away. But understand, while market conditions are looking favorable for flips, the market conditions could change quickly. And if you're going to do a flip, you've got to figure out who's your ideal customer and can you get it done quick enough so that you don't risk market conditions changing on you. Some of the traditional sources of demand, like immigration, have been severely cut back this year. Despite the hot market conditions, there are signs of softness. We know there's a large backlog of properties in forbearance, currently 4.3 million distressed properties in forbearance in the United States. There's also a large number of properties with tenants in default. And unless the government steps in to forgive the loans, we're going to see an increase in the number of distressed properties coming on the market. But when that's going to happen, what the market conditions could be, is really too early to say. On the other hand, we could see a return to more normal market conditions, a resumption of immigration, and another round of government assistance to protect property owners from foreclosure. There's no point in providing help in the short term and then allowing those properties to fall into foreclosure six months from now. That investment in bailout funds would have been completely wasted. So there's probably more stimulus money coming, we just don't know when or where or how much. Now we remain in a low interest rate environment and demand for housing is expected to remain strong as long as the employment market regains strength. Low interest rates are driving demand for homes. We know there are supply shortages in new construction in many markets. There's a few primary markets like New York, Miami, and Seattle that have experienced a surplus in new construction. And outside these few markets, a number of new construction projects were canceled or put on hold when the pandemic hit. We also know that the capital for new construction projects has dried up significantly when the pandemic hit. And all of this means less supply coming into the market. Earlier this week, we talked about the turmoil in Hong Kong. The new security law that was implemented last week has already resulted in the arrest of several thousand people. Fearing loss of freedoms, we could see a major exodus from Hong Kong over a short period of time. That could be a source of immigration. There's upwards of half a million people living in Hong Kong who hold a passport that would enable them to freely, permanently settle in North America. Now, the vast majority of them hold Canadian passports, but these folks could put even more pressure on a low inventory if they were to board flights in large numbers. We could see robust demand coming into next year. So let's say you've decided that the market risk to do a flip is acceptable. The next question is what kind of property should you flip? Much of the price increase in the market has been in the bottom two-thirds of the market. Buyers fear getting priced out of the market, and so much of the market increase has been at the bottom of the market. At the top, where homes are priced over a million dollars, we've seen much less movement in price. Some would say that the more expensive homes have seen close to zero price increase. The result is price compression. The price per square foot on the larger, more expensive homes is in fact much less than the price per square foot for the smaller entry-level homes. In my home city, we've seen a 14% increase in house prices in just the past few months. And in the entry-level condo market, we've seen a 17% price increase. This is a reflection of the fear that many buyers have about getting priced out of the market. After a buyer has lost out on 10 home offers, they become desperate, and they'll go to the top of their affordability in order to get into the market. The key to a renovation project in this market is to make sure you get the property renovation done quickly. If a renovation is going to take more than 30 days, I would not take that risk. A flip project that's on a six-month timeline would be incredibly risky in today's fluid environment. I would also make sure that when you structure your deal, you maintain lots of margin. That means you can't pay too much for borrowed money. 
You can't pay too much for the renovations, and you need to be aggressive on sourcing well-priced materials, and you've got to negotiate with your subcontractors and clearly define the scope of work so you contain the cost of those renovations. You also want to be assured that you're selling into a segment of the market where there's still an extreme shortage and extremely strong demand. So as you think about that, consider doing a flip, but do it very carefully and very aggressively. Have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.